Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss schema on read concept in Hive Data Warehouse. Okay. So already in my previous video, I have explained in detail about the fundamental difference in between schema on write and schema on read. Okay. And I have discussed with respect to Snowflake. I have discussed what is their advantages and what are their disadvantages in detail. So if you want to know all those concepts, then please go through the link given in the description box because those concepts will surely help you to understand or feel the concept of schema on read in Hive in better way, what I am going to discuss today in this particular video. Okay. So what is that? Just a quick recall that is schema on read means the schema will be imposed by the data warehouse system or by database when we will try to read the data. When we will try to write the data, that time it will not check the schema or it will not validate the schema whether the data what we are trying to write and the specified schema are matching or not. But in case of schema on write, what happens? Basically, while writing itself, the data and the schema, whatever we have earlier specified, that has to be matched. Then only it will be able to write the data in the database or data warehouse. If the schema is not matching in between the data what we are trying to ingest and the specified schema, then it will throw error. That is what about schema on write. Okay. Now, if you recall our previous discussion, I have told you that in big data system, we generally work with huge volume of data. Now, write should be generally faster. So, when we try to write the data, if we try to validate the schema for individual rows, then it will be a very time consuming process. That's why we generally don't do schema on write in case of data warehousing system. Rather, we go with schema on read concept okay we simply write the data and whenever we try to retrieve a sub part or complete of the data then we will try to apply this schema okay and the data warehousing system will try its best to take as much information as possible right now what happens in hive let us try to understand what if this schema does not match the file contents whatever is present in our hdfs or s3 location okay that time what Hive do, let us try to understand, okay. So as you know, in Hive, we can create tables that are pointing to a location that you can consider as folder, directory, that can be HDFS location, that can be S3 location, whatever, okay, in our HDFS file system, right. So essentially, Hive is acting like a pointer to the files located in that particular folder or directory. Whether you are considering manage table or whether you are considering external table, in both cases, Hive never directly stored the data. Hive just stored the structure and the metadata information and the actual data is either stored in HDFS location or in S3 location, right? And Hive point to that particular files in the directory or folder structure, okay, right? Now, when you run a query against the folder, Hive read all the files placed in that particular folder or directory in HDFS location or, or in S3. And these files can have different structure at the time of loading because Hive never validate when we simply put the data, write the data, that time it don't validate the schema. So this schema, whatever we have specified in the Hive DDL, that might differ with respect to the file structure, right? While Hive try to read the data, that time Hive basically try to enforce the schema when we query the data, okay, that's what concept of schema on read says, right? Hive does the best that it can read the data properly. It might happen that the Hive specified schema and our file structure is different. That time Hive will try to implement in the best possible way so that it can read the data as much as possible, okay? Like scenario, if you can consider, file generally have some delimiter if you consider some CSV, TSV, etc. file, right? That time, if the file has four delimited values, that is, normal in normal scenario, Hive table also should have four columns in that case. But suppose Hive have three columns only, that time what Hive will try to do, it will try to ignore the last column, okay? And it will take the first three delimited values only, okay? So this is what is the scenario, if file has more values than Hive specified schema. Suppose file have less values compared to high specified schema like uh, file has four delimited values but hive has five columns that time what will happen for the last column in the hive it will be taking null values for the first columns it will be taking the four values from the file and for the last column it will be taking null as simple as that and this way it will try to adjust the schema on 
read. Okay, whenever we will try to read the content from HDFS location, that time it will try to make its best effort so that it can read the data. Okay, now this is what about theory, but when we look into that actually, we will be getting the proper feeling out of it, right? So let's try to feel the concept of schema on read with practical Hive queries, okay? So what we will try to do, we will try to create a database first in our EMR cluster and we will create a table which is an external table which will point to a particular S3 location that can be demo schema on read testing, okay? So let's just take this particular S3 location and I will be going to my S3 in AWS management console, okay? And here I have launched my EMR cluster in OHI region. So for that, I will be launching an S3 bucket also in that same location, okay? And here our bucket is created, okay? So now I will go back to EMR, whatever we launched, I will be taking the master public DNS and then what I will do, I will try to enter with Putti, okay? I will take SSH authentication. I will be taking my PPK file and I will open. Login as Hadoop, our default user ID, right? Now what we will do? We will enter in our Hive shell and we will try to execute this way. I will just simply write Hive and then here what I will do? To avoid the connection interruption, I will change the setting also. And here we have entered in Hive, okay. I will create a simple database because this is a fresh EMR cluster. So I am just creating the database. If you have something, you can use that, right. And then here, this particular table we are going to create. So let me first show you the data, okay. So first, I am going to take one CSV file which is having only four columns, okay. So if you see this particular file, this is a CSV file, which is having ID as integer column, then sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width as double type column, right. So that's how I have specified the DDL also, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width are double type and ID is integer type, okay. And then here I have specified the default delimiters and all, and I will upload the data in this particular bucket. Okay, so I will go to S3 and then here I will upload the content. Okay, so this is the file. Let's upload. So, as you can see here, here totally five columns are there, right? And in the Hive DDL, also we have specified five columns. So, initially in this particular scenario, the file structure and the Hive schema are exactly matching, right? So here it is uploaded, cool, and now all I will do, I will execute this particular DDL, okay. What will happen, the external table will be created and we can read the data which is present in S3, okay, from this particular table, okay. So I can do select star from this particular one, okay. And see here it fetched 51 rows and if you see our CSV file it is also having actually 52 rows first row is header anyway we are ignoring that so total 51 records are there okay now what we will do we will try to insert another file which is having different structure okay so if you see this particular CSV file this is also CSV file but it is having one extra column called class name okay now, if it is schema on right case, this particular file, when trying to insert that time itself, we should get error, okay? Because the schema and the file structure should match in case of schema on right. But as I have already explained, Hive is basically schema on read. That is, while writing the data, it will not at all validate that whether the file structure and the specified schema is matching or not. So, we will not get any error, okay? So, let's upload the content, which is having different structure, which is having an extra column. Okay, and here let's upload this one. And here we have uploaded. Okay, 
So if you see this particular data, second data set, it is having nearly 100 columns, 100 rows, right? 101 rows total, first row is header, so 100 rows. And in our earlier file, first file, it was having 51 rows. So total, we should be getting now 151 rows fetched, okay? So I will be just executing same code again and see it is showing fetched 151 rows, okay? See, although the file structure, whatever we have uploaded as second file and the hive DDL, hive schema, hive table schema is not same, but still we have not got any error because hive has done its best effort to match this schema, okay? So what hive did, basically, this particular column class name is a new addition. It is not there in Hive table DDL, right? So Hive simply ignored that and it just took first five columns, okay? Now what I will do, I will basically try to add this class name using one alter query. Simple SQL alter query I will be executing and I will hit enter, okay? It is executed successfully. And now again, if I execute select star from uh, first demo dot hello csv, what Hive will do? Hive will read that particular content from the file 2, which is basically class name 1 extra addition of column, whatever is not present in our first file. And for the first file, whatever data was there, for those, it will be showing null value for that particular class name column. Okay. So, let's see that. See if I run. See, 151 rows fetched. Okay. So, last 100 rows basically got ingested from the second file. But first, uh, nearly 50 rows we got from first file, right? So you can see for those rows for the last column which is basically class name which was not present in the file 1, it is giving null values, okay. So what you are getting, that is basically Hive is imposing the schema when it is trying to read the data. It is doing its best effort to match all the file structure with the existing defined schema, right. And that's how it is fulfilling the criteria of schema on read, okay. It is not possible in big data world to validate individual row schema when we are trying to ingest the data. So in case of write, it is not at all possible to validate the schema. Once you try to read the content, then only it will validate and it will take the data based on the schema. Okay. So I hope you got the feeling based on this simple lab experiment. I will be providing all the codes in the description box or in the comment section. And I will also suggest you to go through my previous video discussion where I have explained the schema on read and schema on write concept in depth. So that will give you more better feeling. Okay. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment, subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.